hi happy 2021 who am i kidding i asked over on twitter and instagram what you wanted to see for a new video and the majority of you wanted more character design so more character design we're going for a simpler one with like more shine layers and highlights and stuff like that i made the first blob without you just because like i wanted to like do one first to see what to teach in what order you know teach a man to fish but put your oxygen mask on first great start also it's the beginning of the year i'm guessing a lot of you have learned affinity designer on your list and you know now is the time to do it even though you probably got the software on cyber week back in november for 30 percent off who can judge you to talk about the file for a second i'm on a 2000 by 2000 artboard uh the unit is pixels it doesn't really matter because we're working with vectors here but i know that some people are asking for more specifics before i get started so there we go so i'm using the pen tool to draw my curve shortcut p and it needs readjusting, so I'm using the note tool, shortcut A, that every average person would call the white pointer. We're working with transparency and gradients a lot in this file, so you'll see me use transparency applied to colors and not layers, because I often want different alpha levels on one shape, but I don't want that applied to the entire shape. So we're gonna do that with the eye. So let's draw an ellipse, that's the shortcut M, holding shift down as we drag because we want a perfect circle. And while the shape is still selected, hit G and drag to apply the gradient and select one of the gradient colors to edit it. To get back to a regular pointer after applying the gradient, we're hitting V. V is a shortcut for the black pointer, AKA normal pointer. So select that circle, command or control C and V to copy paste and scale it down. Here I want the darker color on top and transparency at the bottom. You'll see why in a second. So copy and paste that same layer, rotate for the dark side to be at the bottom, put that layer under the previous one, and we're blurring it in the effects panel. And adjusting the colors a little bit. It adds a bit of dimension, I guess. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm happy-ish with the eye, so adding more gradient circles for the shine over the dark area. And now let's take the lower layer of the eye and add a drop shadow to it because it adds more dimension. Now let's do- I know it's getting dark. I'm, I'm not good at planning filming. Okay, I had issues. Now let's talk about why outer glow is garbage for most use cases. Like, this is the oatmeal raisin cookie of the effects panel. Yeah, it's all right. And that's because I want the glow to have direction, which you can't do with glow. And we're already using drop shadow here. So I only have one option. I can either like copy and paste and had, have a different drop shadow that goes the other way that's white, or I can copy and paste the eye and blur it and use it as a glow so I can move it. We are going to select all of that and group it with uh, with Command or Control G, and just copy and paste it. So we have another one. New light. Now let's draw the smile with the pen tool. P. Yes. We're now in the stroke panel, which is amazing, and we're gonna use the pressure. And what's great with stroke pressure is that you can have different width along one path, which is amazing. And it just turned out that my recording frame was too small to actually have the, the window that popped up. So here's a screenshot of what my pressure is. So set the color to black and copy and paste because we need a highlight. And we're going to use the same method we use on the eye. We're putting a white blur that is going to be behind the opaque layer. And that's it for the face. It looks familiar, doesn't it? Okay, colors. I want to preface this by saying that I did not plan to have it look like an eggplant. That's it. We're taking the pen tool again and drawing a shape that kind of looks like the body outline and setting up a gradient by hitting G and mouse down where we want the first point, drag and release where we want the end of the gradient ramp. Selecting the top point and going to the color. Color. Color! An idiot sandwich! Same for the bottom. 
Hitting V to have the shape selected and no longer the gradient, and let's blur that out again. Now let's talk about masking. Uh, for the Cyborg crowd, this is where you focus. So what am I doing? If you know Illustrator, this is the equivalent of the clipping mask, except that it's better, faster, and you have way more like layer visibility, and you're still able to change the nodes and the shape of the masking layer, which is amazing. So I'm going to put my shape closer to the edge so you can see how we're doing it. So we're going to take the blurred color shape and we're going to put it inside, quote unquote, the body layer uh, because we want the body layer to be what cuts or masks that color layer. And I should have named my layers. But let's call that a voluntarily relatable decision. That sounds better than just laziness for once. I'm still a piece of garbage. Now let's make a highlight. We'll take the ellipse tool to make one, shortcut M and blur, and put it in our body outline shape. And now is a time where I remember that I wanted to finish the colors before making highlights to make the tutorial more structured. So, so let's turn that ellipse into a curve. To do that, select it, right click, and click convert to curve. You can now edit the nodes as if you had built it with the pen tool. So what are we doing now to move the nodes? Yup, white pointer, shortcut A to edit those curves. I'm kind of happy with the color palette so far, so I'm just going to start with the highlights. So ellipse with gradient like we did on the eye. Since the last gradient we used had all those colors, we can reset it by applying a flat color and reapplying the gradient. Honestly, there's a better way to do this, and it's by using swatches, but I mean, I think we're covered that I have zero discipline for stuff like this. So I try to pick a color for the 0% opacity one that kind of like blends well with the background, and in this case, it's like magenta or blue or purple, and it does affect the way the ramp shows, and that's the reason why it's not white. So now I'm just adding more colors. I meant highlights, not colors. Uh, and adjusting opacity to kind of like mold the pickle. I don't know if that makes sense. See, this is why you should look for an actual teacher and not for some random weirdo on YouTube. So I'm also setting the parent shape, the body as transparent in color because it made the body a little cloudy looking. Uh, I also edited the first blob to remove that frosted glass effect that it, it had before. Important point again, if you're unsure where to put the highlights on the shape, um, I would suggest looking into, you're going to hate me for this, traditional drawing techniques. Um, that's when you really learn about shadows and all of that, like how to use light and how to represent light to make your object realistic. And it, you don't have to necessarily do it, you just have to understand the principle deeply enough so that it's intuitive and that way you don't need a tutorial to do it, you can know by default how the light reflects on that very specific object and how the shadows are cast. And if you want to take a shortcut for this one, you can look at lava lamps, for example, or like water droplets and kind of like replicate the way light affects those. So here we have the extremities of the blob that are heavily colored, a highlight over the same areas and the crease that is not colored because that's where a shadow would be uh, if it was a real blob. And I feel like it's missing some structure here. So I'm going to add a shape to reinforce the idea of a spine, if it makes sense, does it? I, it just makes it more like molded, doesn't it? Molded, it's a weird word. Molded. So let's get started on hard light highlights. Hard light highlights. Wow, the non-blurred ones basically. So take the pen tool, shortcut P. Uh, so take the pen tool and make a, I don't know how to call this shape, some sort of balloon getting caught in a wind turbine or something. And gradient from white to magenta. Magenta at zero opacity and white at, let's go with 15 for now. Moving that around till I'm happy with it. And same thing with an ellipse, shortcut M, third shape. If, if you need to take a break, like leave your screen for a second, like now is the time because I'm struggling on that one. It's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> Oh, no, no, still not. And we're starting over. Okay, this is, this is great. It's just, ooh, we're getting there. Wow, okay. That's, that took a long time. Okay, so you got the drill. 
Uh, same thing on top following our natural bod shape. So last thing to do on our blob is to add a bunch of little ellipses. Ellipses. It always sounds weird when I say it. Uh, to make it sparkle a little bit. I don't know. I like it. Um, at this point, you can also just, you know, adjust your blur colors and all. It's, it's getting close, so do whatever feels right for you. And we're done. I'm making a few other ones really quickly, uh, using the same techniques, honestly. So if you happen to follow this tutorial, like, feel free to, like, pick your own shape and, like, do whatever you... You don't need my permission, just do whatever you want. And I have a good example here when it comes to the gradient thing that I mentioned earlier. Uh, the color ramp being impacted by the color that is at low opacity and here my zero opacity color is actually uh, I think magenta or reddish and you can clearly see on the ramp that it is like a warm tone basically and like you think that oh that was a missed opportunity <laughs> you'd think that doing white and white would work the same way but it just doesn't and it really impacts the way the highlight looks and how it bounces and i don't know to me it makes a big difference i don't know if it's a case for everyone meg we all know that you're rambling because if the speed recording is too fast you'll get complaints in the comments so showing you one last one kind of sped up uh made by copying and pasting the the earth one um so we're gonna have another time for breaks because that's where i really struggle with colors <laughs> i force myself to use orange because i really hate orange and it turns out it it's my favorite one of the bunch now that I just went for candy corn, I guess. And I made one last one that my questionable brain uh, forgot to record. I'm sorry. Um, kind of like inspired by the colors that I got when I was making the, the candy corn one. So I named them all and... Um, well, unsurprisingly, they get better and better as we go. Like, let's say you met the first one, right? Like you would just like walk like and pass them it doesn't really matter you don't really want to interact right but then it gets better as you meet the other ones and then then when you get to the candy corn one you're kind of like if you met candy corn on the platform of the subway at 3 a.m on a saturday night you would like offer a piece of your fruit roll up that's how friendly it looks and you would just like hope that this encounter just turns into a blossoming friendship and that's when you know <laughs> that you made a good blog. <laughs> That's not my cue to finish the video. I don't know what is. If you have any questions about my questionable tutorial, feel free to put it in the comments. And if you want to follow me on Twitter and Instagram and also get a chance to say what you want to see in the next video because that's where I ask what people want to see. It's also over there along with the rest of my work that is better than what I do on YouTube. It's not. This is classic clickbaiting. In the meantime, I wish you, uh, I don't know, resolution fulfillment.